All right, guys, in our previous video, we did a scenario of a buyer and a seller. Uh, Kirby was the buyer, I'm, I was a seller, and we were selling a property, or I was selling a property that was owner occupied. In this case, we're gonna do a scenario where the house is not owner occupied, but there's a tenant in there and the seller is looking to sell the house with a tenant. So Kirby, what are the questions that we got for today? All right, so today, like you said, we're gonna talk about an investor. I'm a new investor, uh, just starting out. What am I, what question do I ask if I wanna buy a rental property? If it's a duplex, fourplex, single family, and just trying to give you insight on what to ask for. I know it's a daunting task, it feels daunting. A lot of people don't know what to say or know what questions to ask, and they're sitting there, you know, scared to tell people, hey, I don't know what to ask. So in this video, we're just trying to give you a better understanding of what, what to ask on just the first phone conversation you have with the realtor, uh, even if it's your own realtor or you're talking to the seller agent or if you're even talking to the seller himself. But these are the questions that you need to know. And this is our, you know, we're going through a checklist of everything that I ask on my first initial uh, contact with the sellers because I usually talk to the seller agent or the seller. So this is the information that I look for when I first reach out. Of course, we have conversations after this, but these are the important questions that I need to know to even make sure it fits in my financial matrix to even further pursue or look into this property. So with all that being said, let's get it in. Hi, I'm inquiring about 127 uh, Bakersfield Avenue. Or is, is that probably still up for sale? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, what's the asking price on it? Asking price is 170. This is a duplex, correct? Yes, correct. Is it, do it currently have any tenants or is it vacant? Yes, one side has a tenant that is long-term, been there for over 10 years, and then the other side has a tenant that has been there for two years. Uh, do you know the rents that they're paying? Uh, the rents in total are fifteen hundred a month. Can you give me a breakdown of that? So, on the long term tenant, they're paying six twenty five a month, and on the newer tenant, they're paying eight seventy five. Okay, so, what's the story on the property? Why is the seller selling it? The seller is looking to cash out and retire. Okay, sounds good. Okay, uh, so a couple other questions. Do you know the age of the roof? The roof is 13 years old. The age of the AC unit? The AC unit is four years old. And the age of the hot water tank? The hot water tank is five years old. Okay. Uh, do you know if the owner, the owner of the duplex, are they paying any of the utilities for the property or is all the utilities set for the tenant? To pay? The utilities are separated. Okay, perfect. Uh, so what about lawn care? Who takes care of that? The tenants take care of their own lawn. Do you have an approximate, what's the taxes and insurance on the property? And taxes is $1,700 a year. Insurance is $1,800. Can you tell me uh, anything about the neighborhood? I mean, I know you get around the neighborhoods more than me or you know about the neighborhood, you being a real estate agent. What is the neighborhood like? Is it you know, on the better side of town, on the worst side of town? I cannot disclose that information, but you can find that information on Trulia. Okay. So when a real estate agent, just for the audience, for if the real estate agent say that, it's usually they are restricted by laws. You know, some states like Georgia, that is, they don't use title companies. They use lawyers to do closings and things like that. And they have different real estate laws, depending on where you're at, that can whether the realtor can or cannot disclose the rental rates in the area or the or what the crime rates are or what type of neighborhood it is. But in this illustration, we're gonna act like we're in Florida. So can you tell me what the okay. what the neighborhoods are like? Is it like is it like Vietnam? I'm not expecting it to be, you know, Beverly Hills 90210, but just give me a scale between there where, where this property actually sits. No, so the area has low crime rate, um, but the, you know, the median income is also low, but there's no disturbances, no vandalized properties, nothing like that, of anything of that sort. So what kind of crimes going on in the area? Uh, the crimes going on in the area are mostly just petty theft. Okay, so like breaking and entering, I mean, like, uh, you know, 
kids terrorizing cars and stuff like that, breaking yeah. in cars. And- Mostly mm-hmm. that there's no, there haven't been any recent reports of vandalism. Okay. And then, so what are the rent rates besides this property? I know the long-term tenant, they're paying lower rate because they probably build a relationship with the owner of the property. But what are the rental rates in like a three mile area around that place? The current average rates right now are 1100 for what these units are going for each. So the final question I got. So I know the seller's looking to cash out. Is there any wiggle room there on the asking price? Is he looking, is it a solid number that 170 is a solid number? Or is it some information that he'll drop down to? Or is he willing to negotiate after doing due diligence and finding other um, discrepancies in the property or repairs that need to be needed? Is he willing to come down on the price so he don't have to fix them before closing? I think that the seller does have wiggle room because he's looking to cash out just so he can get on with his retirement. So he is willing to accept different offers. All right. Thanks a lot. I will run my numbers and I'll get back with you and see if this property fits within my matrix and make it seem, make sure that it's giving me a good return on investment before I reach out to you and move forward. But expect a call from me within a day or so after I run my numbers. All right. Thank you. All right. So, with all the information that I received from the realtor or the seller, this is, again, these are rough estimations that they're getting. They're pretty close, like the rents received. They know that the insurance, the taxes, that's really a rough information. Uh, age of the roof and all that other stuff is rough, est- uh, rough information or estimations. But again, if you decide to move forward with this property, you will get a home inspection, get a home inspection, get a home inspection, get a home inspection. Why? It's because the home inspector, if you get a good home inspector doing a four point uh, home inspection, they will tell you everything that is wrong with the property. If it's holes in the wall, if they got, um, uh, uh, I'm scared myself right there. Uh, I'm just thinking of other inspections I got. If they got rodent infestation, if they got termites, lead paint, lead pipes, uh, all that stuff, copper pipes, whatever, uh, if it's holes in the pipes, they will give you all that. If there's attic missing, not the installation, uh, they'll give you all the rundown of the entire property. And then you can do one or two things with that information. Once you receive that information and you see that it's big ticket items on there, you can go back to the seller if you really want the property. You can go back to the seller to negotiate the price down, saying, say, look, this is what the inspection found. If I grab this property, these are repairs that I will have to do right now because the insurance company is going to make those mandatory for me to do them. So with those numbers, you know, maybe getting an estimate to see how much it'll cost, but like, this is how much it's going to cost me. Can I use this? Can with these numbers, is there a way for you to come down on the price so I can get the property and do these repairs? And no, an inspection is a good tool to use to get the price lower from where the seller is actually asking for the price. But every with all the information that the seller or the seller's agent gave, it's enough to put in a financial matrix. Financial matrix. You know your asking price. You know the current rents. Of course, you probably have plans to raise rents and things like that. But, um, you know, they have mortgage calculators and things like that. I'm not going to plug one simple one. But you have, you know the cost after inspection, you know the cost to uh, make rent ready, which is already rent now. So you can keep receiving the same rent and know, but then you'll know down payment. If it's a duplex, you will have to put 25% down. If it's a single family home, you have to put 20% down. If this is not your first home, if this is your first home and you plan on moving to one side, then you can put 3% down, 5% down and you're good to go. The closing cost between three and 5% for the buyer and then, you know, you put in your loan amount, your interest rate, how much rent, the maintenance, you know, you always allocating for monthly, I mean, yearly maintenance because stuff is going to break in the property. So you got to have money set aside to fix those things that are broken. But how you set up your lease is if it's normal wear and tear things that break, fine. That's you on the landlord. But if it's stuff that the tenant is breaking, how you set up your lease will say that the tenants need to pay for those repairs. Up front, the owner or the landlord might have to pay for them, but you should be recouping that money back if you set up your leases correctly. Um, and then if you're using a property manager, manage expenses go through that. And then 
That's why I asked, was the owner or the landlord paying any utilities? Because that goes into your financial matrix also. And then insurance and then property taxes go in there. And then you run that and see what your return on investment is, your cash on cash return is, to see if it fits within your parameters of a good investment. And then from there, if everything's working out and then the numbers come up good and after you roll through the neighborhood during the daytime to see what the area is like. And then as the seller said, they have a lot of petty theft. You want to roll through there at night to see what's going on, to see if this is a very bad problem of people breaking in and stuff, or is this just a, you know, kids, you know, just being knuckleheads, you know, lifting up car handles just to see if somebody's door unlocked. You know, or if it's, you know, strong arm robbery going on on the corners, drug selling and things like that. So you got to do your homework and your research. But once you do all that, then after you did the research, did the due diligence, that's when you would go in to put in an offer if all the things lined up. But asking the question to the real estate agent early on, you can actually put this in your box or check it off your box of properties that you want to deal with, even if it's just based solely off the information you got on the initial phone call. But with all that being said, Alex, do you got any input on that? Nope. And I myself learned a lot from this. So glad I have this video. Okay. With all that being said, if you have any questions or comments or concern, comment down right there in the comment section. But that right there is the initial question you ask a real estate agent or seller when you're buying a rental property for the first time. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. And then... Also, again, comment down if you want to see any content about anything that pertaining to anything financial. We're here. We're open ears and we love to provide information for the people that's watching our channel. So y'all have a good one. We'll talk to you on the next video. Have a good one, guys.